Welcome to the Seller Roundtable e-commerce coaching and business strategies with Andy Arnott and Amy Wees. Good morning, Amazing at Home and Seller Roundtable Extras. This video is an answer to Jenny's question in the Amazing at Home group. And she says, Amy, may I ask, do you private label the sample of 100? And if so, is it more of a case of getting your logos on their packaging at this point and maybe upgrading with future orders? And also, do you sell many different unrelated products under one brand? Um, she said, I've heard of people doing test runs with 100 products and then they are just off the shelf, which anyone can source and then sell. I think my whole journey has been way over complicated up to this point. And then that post got some attention. Um, we also had a response that says, I was wondering that too, about buying 100 on AliExpress to test the market. I thought maybe you could do that and then change it a little and source your own, but I'm not sure. So let me tell you what I do when I'm sourcing small, okay? Um, you're totally right. If you go on AliExpress or on wholesaler.alibaba or on uh, Alibaba ready to ship and you just look at products. So let's say I type in the words jump rope. I'm into fitness, right? I'm typing in the words jump rope. And, um, and I start looking at jump ropes. I'm like, oh, that one's cool. Okay, I could I could buy that for a dollar. All right, let me go check what I can sell it for on Amazon. And you'll notice that they're all everything you see there is already on Amazon. And sometimes it's merchant fulfilled. Sometimes it's uh, it's Prime and it's being sold by 20 different people. Uh, and you you're just gonna go, well, what the heck, you know? So nearly everything you find if you start with the product is going to be on Amazon. Okay. And it's not going to be a good opportunity for you. What I do, and this is what we teach in the Canton Fair Experience course, is I start by studying the market. I, I know this is foreign to most people. They start by looking at software and going, oh, this product's in, in, uh, in high demand and it has low competition. I should source that. Well, that's what everybody else is doing. So instead, I look at the market and I think about, okay, what problems do need solving that I don't have a product for in my life? You know, so maybe I'm, I'm cleaning the house and I want to use this new cleaning solution, but I really don't have a good way. It needs to be mixed properly and I really don't have a good way to mix it. And I'm like, oh man, you know, if there was just a container where I could mix stuff in, because there's nothing on the market with that will work with cleaning solution in a mixing container. Okay. But I have a shaker cup and the shaker cup would work really good for mixing something, right? And of course, this idea is totally, you know, I don't know probably wouldn't work. This is in a spray bottle, you know, all of that. But anyway, you get the idea, right? I found an existing product that is already on the marketplace that is not being sold to people who are looking for cleaning supply mixers, cleaning supply containers for mixing cleaning supplies, whatever, right? So that is because it's really going to be hard for you to find a product that is not on the market already for the purpose that it was intended to be used when you're looking on AliExpress or Alibaba, right? But if I am finding a product that is meeting a need, so maybe there's, you know, even maybe there's a product in it that works for something else. So in, in the example of my felt letter boards, um, you know, these things got so saturated, but no one was selling them in the signs category. No one was selling them under office signs, you know. So just think about that. You know, yesterday I saw a, um, 
a stick up thing, a stick up dinosaur for a kid's room. And it was a chalkboard. I was just looking on AliExpress. And if, and of course, I'm not going to buy that because there's thousands of them on Amazon and, you know, whatever. But, um, and I'm not in that, ca I'm not in that marketplace. But how could I apply that to an office supply? Right. Because that's probably not being sold as an office supply. It's probably not being sold to classrooms for teachers. You know, those are some ideas that you can use. And of course, you've got to research that. Right. You've got to look at the marketplace, go on Pinterest and see what are teachers using in their classrooms and then go, oh, you know, what are people DIYing? What are people selling on Etsy? Is any of that stuff existing in the marketplace, but not being sold to that side of the market? All right. So that is what I look for, whether it's small quantities or large quantities. I look for that. I look for gaps in the marketplace. OK, now let's talk about small quantities. So let's say I find a product in the, this mixing container. Right. And I'm like, OK, I'm going to sell it to in the cleaning category for mixing cleaning supplies. The more I think about this, I think of like a chemistry, uh, a chemistry, you know, lab and somebody blowing something up. So this is a terrible idea. I hope nobody takes it. But anyway, I'm going to sell this to the cleaning supply market and um, as a cleaner. Right. Well, I live in the U.S. It's super easy for me to source some of these on either Alibaba Ready to Ship or AliExpress. and I'm going to order 50 to 100 units and I'm going to make sure that I can get it for a decent price. And I'm going to make my own packaging. I'm not going to, because when you order small quantities like that, you're not putting your logo on it. You're not putting, you know, you're lucky if it comes in a poly bag and if that poly bag has the necessary suffocation label on it, like you're not doing any of that. You have to do that yourself. But I already know how to do that myself because I've done retail arbitrage. I've done wholesale bundles. It's not that hard. So literally what I would do is I would go to and this is what I'm going to do with these new products that I just sourced yesterday. I ordered 200 units of two different products for two different markets. And I'm going to go down to you printing and I'm going you printing dot com. And I'm going to create a little sticker with my logo on it. I'm going to get a, a nice box from my local packaging store and um, some packing material. And I'm going to have a nice little brown cardboard box with my UPC on it and my little logo sticker. And I'll create a little a little insert on Canva saying, hey, thanks for buying it. I could even print it right here on my printer at home. And, you know, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put together 50 units and I'm going to send those into Amazon. I'll keep the other 50 at the house. And, you know, I'll just test those out and see how they do. And if they do really well, then I will actually make a large order and apply. I'll use the things that people have given me feedback on. So this, that product that I sewed myself that I told you guys about, that I sent it in and people left five star reviews. And this thing was kind of I mean, it was kind of janky, but it worked well for the purpose that it, that I made it for. And um, and this purpose, this was a problem in the marketplace. It was a problem I was having. So I just sewed some up. I made a little insert card. I put them in a poly bag with a little UPC and I sent them in and they sold out and people really liked them. And I was like, OK, you know what? I solved a problem here. And now I have a, I've sent in my design. So I already have a design because I prototyped it. And I sent that design to a manufacturer. And now that manufacturer is making that product for me. They're working on samples right now, of course, after the Dragon Boat Festival is done in China. But anyway, that's how you test. You don't don't overthink it, you guys. Don't overthink it. This is not rocket science. Make it look decent. Stick a sticker on there. You don't even have to have like a real brand. Just make something up. Like you're just testing the market. You can put any brand name in there. You know, uh, you don't. Yes, you should use GS1 barcodes, but you can definitely use a, a reused barcode agency like Nationwide Barcode or Snap UPC just to test the market. All you need is a barcode and a brand name to test the market. And again, all right, if you live outside of the United States 
and you're like, Amy, I can't get a sample in my hand and do, why not? Ship it to Australia, ship it to wherever you live, you know, Canada, whatever. Ship one, buy one from AliExpress. Ship one to yourself, test it out, see what it's all about. Then make an order of 10 of that exact product or 100 and send it direct to Amazon or send it to a prep center or hire a mom on hiremymom.com and send it to her and have her forward it on Amazon for you. Let her do a little pack and prep and pay her like a dollar a unit to do it for you, whatever. But there's tons of prep centers that'll do this for you. There's tons of places. If you live outside of the United States, there's no, uh, you know, no excuse not to try it. But um, if you still feel like, wow, I, I just can't, I can't wrap my head around this and I really want to do this right. Well, don't worry because my cohort, Andy and I have something coming your way that is going to give you all of the right tools to do this right, including how to launch a small test product and make the right decisions and move that forward into your real private label brand. But hopefully this video today gets your brain moving, gets you starting to think about what is possible. But guys, stop looking at products. Stop it. Stop looking at products. You will spend all day looking at products. It's a waste of your time, okay? Look at markets. Look at trends. See what people are doing. You're already living your life every single day. And, and I've heard this from a million people. They're like, Amy, my life is boring. I go to work, I come home, I don't do anything. Yes, you do. You go to work, what do you do at work? Where are your problems there? You know, you drive your kids to school. You, you do all of these things every single day. And there are products that suck, that you need in your life that are not there, but are already existing. And there are the other products that are already existing that would work great for that, okay? So anyway, I'm going to wrap this up. I hope that you guys have gotten some great information from this. And I challenge you. I challenge you to get out there and find a problem in the marketplace. This is your challenge. In the next seven days, I want you to get out there and find a problem in the marketplace that could be solved with an existing product that is not being sold to that market yet. Ready, set, go. Thanks for tuning in. Join us every Tuesday at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time for live Q&A and bonus content after the recording at sellerroundtable.com. Sponsored by the ultimate software tool for Amazon sales and growth, sellerseo.com and amazingathome.com.